Where do you get inspiration from? I get inspiration from, I don't know, but it's not movies. I get inspiration from like things that I see like in the world. And then I kind of like something clicks and I'm curious. It's really, I just follow my curiosity. And then I go and do a lot of research into whatever that thing is. If it's in this case, it's like what it would be like to be kidnapped. So then I like read books about that and talk to people who've been kidnapped and so forth. And I, I don't know exactly the mechanism of what it is about the, the, the situation that, that ignites some curiosity, but then I just sort of follow my curiosity. And then after all the research is done, I, somehow try to take that and shape it into a story that I think can have meaning for other people. Mm. But some writers get inspiration just from like their own personal lives, which I do too. Like I, obviously we all like come to something from our own like personal experiences, but I very much depend on like the outside world. I'm not just like sitting in my head, like being like, Oh, well, how would, how, well, it would be really, I'm never like, Oh, it'd be really cool if then this happened. I'm much more like, hey, how would this really happen? And that's like a question that you can, I mean, there's a lot of answers to it, but it's, a, it's, like, it's like if you, you, can, you can answer that question by talking to people. Mm. You know, like, like, like you can call up a special forces guy and be like, how would you deal with this situation? You can call up 30 of them and have all these different conversations and then like meld it down into something that seems like that crystallizes the heart of it all. How difficult is that process of like trying to take someone's depictions and descriptions and personal experiences and, and trying to put that into dialogue with fictional characters and just, I mean, it's not just dialogue. I mean, I don't, I, I love it. <laughs> it's not just dialogue though. Like a lot of people think of screenwriting as dialogue, which is not really right. Although a lot, it, it it's, it's not just dialogue. You're also writing like the, the image, which is way in, in a lot of ways, way more important than what people are saying in a movie. It's like a motion picture, right? It's like an mm. image that you're seeing. So there's words being spoken, but it's really like, how do people look? What are they doing? How are they moving through space? Some of that is up the, up to the director, but a lot of it is governed by the screenwriter too. So you're really writing like a series of images and then there's dialogue like in addition to that. And the dialogue is how the characters speak. And then there's some things that that dialogue is good for. And there's some things that like are really fucking hard to do with dialogue as opposed to like the written word. Like if I was to, if I was to write a story about, about anything like you, for example, just as a, just to take an example in prose, it'd be really easy to like write about what you're thinking about. Just like he, he thought you just like write it out. But if it's a, if it's a movie, like the only way I can get access to your brain is, is either through your behavior, right? Cause there's no like thought bubble over your head. So I either have to like describe what you're doing in such a way that it reveals who you are, or I have to have you say some shit that's really revealing about mm -hmm. who you are. That's, that's pretty hard. Like, like depicting people's inner states and then you don't have total control over it because an actor, another human being is like taking your work and like bringing it to life. So they bring a whole nother level of like inspiration and artistry and interpretation and meaning on top of whatever it is you were originally starting with. What is that feeling like when you're seeing someone like Jeremy Renner, like taking your words and, and bringing them to life and you have to, so you have expectations of what it's going to be like. And then you see this artist interpretation of it and you're, what is that feeling like when you're watching it all come to life? It can be like a great, a great pleasure. You know, it can be amazing. A, a, a lot of times it's better. Really? You know, a lot of times you're like, oh my God, this is so much better than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it's a good actor. Right. If it's a great actor like, like Jeremy is, you know, you're like, wow. I must be really fucking good. You're like, no, nah, it's just like, he's, br he's bringing so much to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's putting so much like, like intensity into it. If you have an actor that's not as skilled, it can go the other way. And you're like, God, this stuff sucks. Mm. So it all depends on like the intelligence and talent of the actor. Usually 
that's got to be tricky in the casting process to try to figure out who's who. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the big one. Of the big thing about directing is like you try to cast it right. It's like kind of the big decision, and everything else follows it. 